Good evening. Tonight we're going to be chatting about the ApoE e gene. Last week we talked about the ApoB containing particles. Quick refresher, it's the ApoB containing particles that are attached to the LDL particle, the, the VLDL particles, the IDL particles, and LPLA if you have it, which about 20% of the population has. And it's those ApoB containing particles that uh, really drive the risk for cardiovascular disease by a gradient uh, diffusion process. So more ApoB containing particles, more risk that they interact with the arterial wall and get retained in the artery wall. So if you haven't caught up on that one, uh, it's in my uh, live feed. But tonight we're gonna be talking about the ApoE as an echo gene. So the ApoE gene has a major role in the metabolism of dietary fats. So I'm talking about ApoE gene more from a cardiovascular standpoint. I'm not gonna talk too much about the, uh, uh, the neuro uh, aspects of it, but it is important to know that as well. So, you know, where do you get your ApoE gene? Uh, you get one copy from your mom, one from your dad. And there are three isoforms or three alleles. There's a two, a three, and a four. So there's six different types that you could potentially have, where you could have a three, three, and that's about 64% of the population. Uh, a two and a three is about 10% of the population. A person who has an ApoE two and a two, that's only 1% of the population. We'll talk about why that might be an issue in some people. The ApoE3-4 is about 18% of the population. And ApoE4-4 is about 5% of the population. And ApoE2-4 is about 5% of the population. So the greatest majority of people who are probably watching this tonight, you're probably an ApoE3-3. It's still important for you. You have normal cardiovascular risk. But if you know somebody who has an ApoE2 or a 4, uh, listen up a little bit because they may have different cardiovascular risk factors than yourself. And they need to know about this. So you can get this ApoE gene uh, from you know, 23andMe, I believe, um, but it's definitely in the advanced lipid profiles that I perform at Apollo Cardiology and many, you know, integrated functional doctors that do this test for you as well. The major lab companies can do it. Should be less than 50 bucks if, uh, uh, if you're paying cash for it. But from a cardiovascular standpoint, you know, the APOE uh, binds lipoproteins and those lipoproteins, again, are like the cargo ships. They're what fill up full of the cholesterol and the triglycerides, because those things are waxy, fatty substances. They don't float in the liquid blood. So the ApoE binds the lipoproteins to the cell surface receptors. So essentially the ApoE helps get these triglyceride-rich lipoproteins out of the bloodstream into the liver at the LDL receptor. <clears throat> so the majority of the ApoE uh, proteins that are made by the gene are made in the liver. There are some of the macrophages which are going around um, you know, there are types of white blood cells, you know, chewing up things in the, uh, the blood, but the majority of it's coming from your liver. So I will, you know, take a quick detour, you know, in the brain, it's the astrocytes. The ApoE is the, uh, the principal carrier of cholesterol in the brain. Um, and the ApoE4 carriers, especially the ApoE4-4 carriers, they have a higher propensity to Alzheimer's disease. Um, it's through you know, the way the body is clearing certain uh, inflammatory compounds in the brain and plaques. I'm not gonna go into that tonight. I'm mostly gonna focus, like I said, on the cardiovascular health. But if you have an ApoE4 gene, uh, doesn't mean automatic Alzheimer's. You're just potentially at increased risk. So talk to your doctor about you know, what are your other risk factors? Are you insulin resistant? You know, are you overweight? You know, do you have high inflammatory markers? All those things would play a role in it. Um, so don't freak out too much if you have an ApoE4. I see it all the time in my practice. <clears throat> So, as I said earlier, you know, the ApoE gene, it helps clear the triglyceride-rich lipoproteins from the circulation. Which ones are those? You know, that's mainly the, uh, the VLDLs and the IDLs and the chylid microns. Um, there's also ApoE on the HDL. So this is one of the reasons why HDL particles are important with the ApoE uh, attached to it. It can get into the uh, lipid-rich uh, fatty streaks that are in the wall of the artery and it can help delipidate. It pulls in that cholesterol into the ApoE containing lipoprotein, carries it back to the liver to recycle it. So earlier I talked about, you know, how uh, dietary fats are metabolized with the ApoE gene. The people who have an ApoE 3, 3 gene, they metabolize fats normally. The people who have an ApoE 2 gene, they clear dietary fats more slowly. Partly that's going to have an effect on uh, their lipids because the ApoE 2 gene doesn't allow the lipoproteins to bind to the LDL receptor as well. So you can't um, really clear it from the system very well. And it tends to increase your triglycerides um, 
through a different pathway. So people who have an ApoE2 gene, you know, they tend to be able to tolerate a decent amount of fat on their diet. So if someone is on a keto diet and they have an ApoE2 gene, it's usually not as big of an issue, um, but they can't really tolerate really high glycemic loads. You know, they're much more at risk of insulin resistance. So if you're handling the body full of a lot of glucose and you're not using your muscles to get rid of that stuff, um, you're gonna package it up in triglycerides and you're gonna have, you know, potentially something called type three hyperbetalipoproteinemia. Long mouthful word, I should say type three hyperlipoproteinemia, not beta lipoproteinemia. But um, the APOE4s, they're the converse. They really clear fat very effectively through the uh, cardiovascular, I'm sorry, through the, uh, um, that LDL receptor. It binds just as well as the APOE does. <clears throat> but it does tend to uh, bind more preferentially to the VLDLs than the HDLs. Um, and so that can, when the VLDLs break down, pumps out more LDLs. So if you have an APOE4, you tend to have higher resting LDLs. Um, so all things being considered, that can increase your cardiovascular risk. If you have an endothelial dysfunction, inflammation, and high APOE containing particles, uh, the APOE4s can have higher cardiovascular risk because of that. Um, the APOE4s tend not to tolerate high fat diets. Um, you know, they tend to absorb the fats through their gut more effectively and pull it into the liver through this LDL receptor. Uh, so people who are in APOE4 and they're doing a keto type diet, uh, their lipid panels tend to look horrific sometimes. You know, total cholesterol is in the 600, LDL cholesterol is in the 400. So it's one of those cases where if you had quote, a normal lipid profile before the diet and this really jacks up, um, you want to check uh, you know, your APOE status. And then also uh, there, uh, especially with the Boston uh, Heart Diagnostic Lab, you can check your cholesterol balance test. So you have an issue of hyperabsorbing sterols through your uh, amino one pick like receptor in the gut. Uh, those are the people that keto type diets don't do very well for. Um, the APOE4s also tend not to tolerate high doses of the statins, particularly uh, the, the water soluble ones. Um, so yeah, it's not saying you can't be on a statin, but people who have an APOE4 gene uh, tend not to tolerate the highest doses, more risk of giving the mileage as muscle pains. But you want to try to, uh, you know, fix everything else again, make sure they have optimal vitamin D status, optimal thyroid function. Uh, also check a gene called SLCO1B1, SLCO1B1. If you have that in an APO4 gene, sometimes it's really challenging to use statins in those patients. But, you know, consider something like Neclozet or, you know, or Pathoprelurin, depending on the, on the circumstances in that case. Uh, but another interesting thing I found when I was uh, researching this topic for you guys tonight was the effect of alcohol uh, on these uh, genes. Uh, the uh, patients who have an APOE2 or a 3 gene, they may benefit from uh, what they consider moderate alcohol intake, so one to two uh, drinks per day. Um, but the APOE4s tend to increase uh, their cardiovascular risk. So, um, so the APOE4s should really contemplate, you know, if they have cardiovascular disease, you know, have you know, severe dyslipidemia, it may just be as simple as cutting out the alcohol and seeing where your lipid profile settles after that. So that's what I want to share with you guys tonight is this APOE gene. It's definitely a, a big topic. Uh, you know, if you start researching APOE4 and Alzheimer's, you're going to find a lot of information. Um, you know, maybe I'll do a topic on that uh, in the future, but just want to hit the kind of the cardiovascular bullet points tonight. Uh, next Monday, 6 p.m. Central Time, I'm going to do a, a talk about hypertension, some different ways to think about it, you know, how you should actually be evaluated for it, and then maybe we'll have time, we'll get into some of the uh, other alternative uh, treatment options for it. But I uh, want to thank you guys for your time and attention tonight, and if you need anything in them, always can reach me here on Instagram, but uh, also check me out on my website, drtwyman.com. If you're not already on my newsletter, you know, I encourage you to sign up for it. I usually send out a, a message at least once a week. Uh, has links to uh, different podcasts that I'm personally listening to uh, and also has the uh, kind of updates of what we're doing here at Apollo Cardiology in St. Louis to help people really reduce the risk of having heart attacks and strokes. So I hope you guys have a great week and we'll see you next time.